friends. Welcome to Shizman Closing Ceremonies. I hope that over the course of the weekend, you've had the opportunity to explore the various facets of debate and collaboration. We'll be starting off our ceremonies with a video made by our wonderful Digital Press Corps, who have been working diligently over the past two days to provide you with the reports and press leases available on the Shizman website and the MUN mobile app. Following the DPC video, we'll be hearing from our guest speaker, Martina Neep, who is the director of the Schengen Center in Luxembourg, which was host to the famous Schengen Agreement that opened borders in Europe. To see the opening video and speaker, please click on the link in the chat. Once it's concluded, we look forward to seeing you back in this Zoom for live committee awards. Hello, delegates, and welcome to the closing ceremonies of Schisman 2020. Let's begin with a roll call of all of our wonderful committees. Genco. Zetco. Dissec, Ecofin, Sakium, Legal, Unusa, IOM, UNEP, UNESCO, UNODC, WHO, IMO, UNCTAD, and Munich. My favorite part about Shizman 2020 so far has been how well the chairs and everybody in the conference has made it uh, feel like a real conference. I've been to a couple of real conferences before and uh, I can't tell much of a difference between this one and past conferences. Even though it's still virtual, they've done a really, really good job of making it feel like a normal conference. My favorite part of Shizman 2020 so far is the fact that it's actually on Zoom. I'm naturally a pretty shy person, so being in person, I just find that like I'm nervous to speak up or my voice just doesn't reach the chair or other delegates. So I'm finding like on Zoom, I can still speak in my normal voice, but I can still be heard by others because if I'm not heard, they can of course just increase their volume. Mm -hmm. right now is voting on the two resolutions that we've written together that are supposed to be not in tandem necessarily but complementary to each other as well as debating our third topic um, that I think is a lot more technical so I'm excited to see how everyone functions in something like that. Um, I would say I'm looking forward to continuing to get to know my fellow delegates more closely um, and to understand their policies, their solutions, and them as people as well. Model UN has definitely helped me learn more about global affairs because there's so many topics that you get to research and hear about that you that like I would have no idea existed if it weren't for Model UN or I wouldn't know that it was even something that was being debated but yeah. Model UN over the years has definitely helped me learn a lot about global affairs. Um, I've learned about topics from gay rights to refugee crises across the world to, I mean, there's just migrant smuggling. I've debated probably 20 topics since my freshman year, and it's taught me a lot about debate, and it's also taught me about the real, real world problems. love uh, model united nations probably because it represents how we're able to bring our whole world together to try and solve problems that are an issue in so many places and just getting closer and closer to possibly having a peaceful and great world why do i enjoy coming to model UN? well it's fun because um i get to meet new people from different schools different backgrounds 
get to debate different issues and just kind of have a fun time, meeting people, making new friends. So, yeah. Delegates, thank you for all of the incredible dedication and hard work you've put into Shizman 2020. Even with the crazy circumstances of the past year, we believe this conference has been one of the best in Shizman's history. Thank you for your constant enthusiasm, and we hope to see you next year for Shizman 2021. Hello everybody at Chismin. I'm happy to talk to you and it's a great honor for me to be invited to talk to you at your conference. My name is Martina Kneip. I'm the director of the European Center in Schengen. Well, Schengen is a little village in Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a small country in Europe. But Schengen is very well known by people from all over the world, I guess, because of the Schengen Agreement. You know, the Schengen Agreement means open borders between different people. So if today you hear the word Schengen in the in mind of people, it's normally that the borders are open inside the, what we call today the Schengen area. You don't have to show passports if you cross borders between different countries. So it's a very comfortable thing, especially for people here in Luxembourg, because we are very small. We have a lot of borders around us and they are all very close to us. So it's very easy to cross borders from here to Germany or France. We're only living a few meters away from Germany and France. It's a border triangle here. So this is basically also the reason why the Schengen Agreement was signed here in Schengen. But Schengen is much more than this because Schengen started in 1985, which meant at that time open borders between different countries, open borders between, for example, Germany and France, who had been enemies for such a long time, really seemed to be a very irrealistic thing was a bit like a utopia. But some politicians had this in mind, they had good ideas and they signed the treaty and ten years later the borders were really open between the different countries. And for some time people were very happy with it, it was a good thing to have open borders. You realize that people could travel much more easily from one country to another the younger generation could travel, they could work in different places, they could uh, study in different places all over Europe, which was really a very good thing and which really broadened the horizons of all of us. So, but of course, very good things, they have good sides, they have bad sides. On the one hand, we were, or we still are, the Schengen area, which is a big outside border. Of course, we should not forget the people living outside this border. On the other hand, also, there were challenges, like everywhere. And well, one of the first challenges was the migration crisis. Well, the migration crisis was all over the world, is all over the world, we have to say. But, well, I can talk about the migration crisis in Europe. You all know this, in 2016, a lot of people from different countries outside the European Union, they wanted to find asylum here, international protection here in Europe. Well, borders were open at that time and the Schengen Agreement also allowed these people travel all over uh, the Schengen area. So for some, times it were, some time it was okay and then the country started to close their borders, they did not want to let people come in, etc. So this is something which is, shows a bit that things that we took for granted for such a long time that are not to be taken for granted, that we have to work on them every day and that there are still a lot of people or also a lot of countries, governments, whatever, who still have the tendency to close down the borders at the moment when things get more difficult. But this is really the challenge we all have. When things get difficult, we still have to work together and we still have to cooperate because this is the only moment or the only possibility to overcome challenges. 
because in the end it's not about countries, it's about all of us. And well, I know the perspective of Europe, but you know other perspectives, and this is something which is important all over the world. So we have everywhere we have conflicts between countries and so on, and we should not forget that the most important thing is that we talk to each other and that we work to each other. And I think this was also one of the reasons why this project European Union was working very well for such a long time, because the open borders allowed us to travel easily, to get closer to other people and to understand more. We do not have to have one European culture. We have different cultures, we have different traditions, which is important, but we still have to think about the diversity of all of us as something which helps us, which is enriching us. So this is one of the messages we try to tell here in Schengen, the cradle of the Europe uh, without borders, as we call it. Well, I was talking about the challenge of the migration crisis. At the moment, we are, have a big challenge all over the world, which is the pandemic. And this is something which was very, very new to us here in Little Luxembourg as well, that our neighbors closed the borders to Luxembourg. So there was a time, some weeks, some months, when we could not cross the border to Germany or to France, even if we live in Germany and we work in Luxembourg or we live in Luxembourg and we want to meet our friends in France because here everything is a mixture. We do not think in different countries. We think in one region and this was not possible at the time. So this was not only a shock for me personally, this was a shock for all of us that we could be thrown back so easily. So this is also something we should never forget and as we all know, unfortunately the virus does not stop at a border. So the virus is international. We have found out about that very quickly that the, the virus is everywhere and we can, all, we can only work against these threatenings when we work together. So, this is the message what we have here in Luxembourg. It might not be a new message, we have to work together. But we should not forget it, because it's something, if we take things granted for such a long time, sometimes it's difficult to think back to the times when things have not been so easy. And we try to take it as a chance at the moment that maybe some people, especially the young people who are used to travel and to live in a common Europe or in a common space, that once you lose things, you appreciate them more than you did before. So let's take that as one of the, the good parts of it, that we should maybe appreciate things, the things more that we have. So I'm, as I said, I'm very happy to be here and to talk to you because you're the future and you know more than anybody that borders, national borders or cultural borders are not the important borders. They can be overcome. The important borders we have to overcome are the borders in our minds. So your initiatives and your effort, your initiatives you have to help us all to understand each other better. This is what brings us forward. So this is one of the reasons why I'm so happy to talk to you and I was talking in an interview a few weeks ago to some of your colleagues and they explained to me their point of view. So I explained my point of view and they explained their point of view. They live on the other side more or less of, of where I live and we still have the same thoughts. So this is something which still gives me confidence and, well, I congratulate you to your effort and thank you very much for letting me talk to you. Thank you all so very much for watching our DPC closing video and listening to our guest speaker. 
Do not leave the Zoom call at this point and return back to the main screen to watch a live streaming of our committee awards. So I hope that you enjoyed the closing video. Um, again, a huge thank you to DPC for putting that together for us. Um, making their work even more impressive is the fact that they collaborated and put everything together remotely. So it's that time of these closing ceremonies. We will now be presenting our committee awards, and I have the pleasure of introducing our first award presenter, the phenomenal 2020 Director General, Yuni Yang. Hello everyone, my name is Yuni Yang and it has been my absolute pleasure serving as Director General for Shizmen 2020 for the past year and throughout these last two debate filled days. Now, while debate may have looked different this year as I visited each committee room, I was still able to see the excitement and innovation of each delegate within their author panels and resolutions and everything in between. And on behalf of the conference and the staff, I wanna thank you all for truly taking these topics and transforming them into two days of fruitful debate. This year, our staff really tried to mold topics that would spark timely, difficult conversations. We wanted the topics to embody the social climate of this world and teach not only cross-continental collaboration, but empathy and communication. From General Committee to Security Council, to our beloved GA committees of DISEC, ECOFIN, SOC Human Legal, to our specialized nuance committees of UNESCO, UNIP, UNODC, WHO, IMO, UNCT80, and Munich, and our two ad hocs, UNUSA and IOM. From addressing the situation in Kashmir to protecting against space-based cyber espionage and everything in between, I hope every single one of you found value and appreciation for every topic supplemented with the perspectives of each member state throughout these last two days. More importantly, I hope you step away from this weekend, knowing that this conference and this weekend has been worth it for you. Now to shift gears away from a sappy speech to something you are all waiting for, awards. As Director General, I have the opportunity to award a best position paper to one delegate in the entire conference. Throughout the past few days, I've gotten the chance to read everyone's position paper and decide which one most embodies the spirit of Shizmen and the importance of research, sophistication, and the organization of ideas. While I enjoyed reading all of your position papers, one in particular stood out to me. This delegate's position paper revealed hours of research and a deep understanding of the topic. They used an impressive amount of sophisticated language throughout all three of their papers and focused on nuanced aspects of each topic. They really embodied the purpose of the position paper within our long history of Shizmen and this conference. And with that, I would like to present the best position paper award to the delegate from the United States of America in the committee of UNEP. And with that, to present our committee awards, here is our beautiful, wonderful, absolutely amazing general committee president, Sophie Perano. Hello everyone, my name is Sophie Perano and I have the honor of serving as a general committee president for Shizmen 2020. GC delegates worked hard in both creating priority outlines for the num of the numerous important topics debated this year and actually made GC history by finishing debate on every single topic that committees pass resolutions on, which is incredible. I was so happy with all of the, your preparation, hard work and participation in all of debate. In terms of awards, I wanted to give one to everyone due to how impressed I was because we had 100% participation, but there were a few delegates who stood out to me. I will start with my honorable mentions in alphabetical order. My first honorable mention goes to a delegate who had a great technical understanding of debate, making motions that the committee hadn't even thought of yet. This delegate was willing to switch things up from the norm and the committee flowed better as a result. My first honorable mention goes to the delegate of Estonia.
My second honorable mention goes to a delegate who was a trendsetter in debate. When they made motions, other people followed. This delegate took charge at the beginning of debate and people followed their lead and their motions, especially the patented six minute uh, moderated caucus with a 45 second speaker's time. My second honorable mention goes to the delegate of the United States. The best delegate award for general committee 2020 goes to a delegate who is incredibly well researched writing papers full of specific data. In addition, during our resolution debate, they brought up numerous unique details within resolutions and backed it up with extensive research. When they discussed an idea, other delegates followed their lead, many after them echoing their sentiments. The best delegate award goes to the delegate of Nigeria. And now I would like to give over the floor to our two lovely digital press board co-editors in chief, Corinne and Harley. Hello everyone, my name is Corinne Phillips and I've served as your 2020 Digital Press Corps Co-Editor-in-Chief alongside my partner in crime, Harley Madrich. Even though we are here to recognize the DPC Best Delegate Award, I'd like to take a moment to thank each and every one of my DPC staff members. Harley and I deeply appreciate all of the diligent work you all have put into the documentation of this year's conference. We couldn't have done it without you and cherish the memories we've made together. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Harley. Hi everyone, I'm Harley Madrick, the other DPC co-editor-in-chief. I would like to thank my partner in crime, Corinne, the rest of the staff and all of our DPC reporters and photographers for making this conference so amazing and so special. All of DPC has worked incredibly hard to provide media content to help us remember this conference forever. Corinne and I want to give our best delegate award to someone who has gone above and beyond our expe expectations, someone that has amazing communication skills, someone that has remained positive and optimistic throughout some very stressful situations, someone that fully deserves this award. The Digital Press Cord Award goes to Sia Patel. Hello everyone. My name is Isabel Kegu and it has truly been an honor to chair the Security Council at this year's, um, as, this, as this year's Security Council President. Before I hand off the committee awards, I would like to take a moment to recognize all of the amazing Security Council delegates. While we did not have a full 15 member Security Council as is customary for previous Churchman conferences, the Security Council delegates this year did not fail to live up to the high standards and expectations set forth by many of the many of Schirschman's most esteemed and respected delegates who have debated in this prestigious committee. And what the committee lacked in membership, the delegates made up for with their sheer passion for the topics being debated. From their handling of a virtual crisis that lasted until 5.15 a.m. this morning to their evident devotion, which was demonstrated through their increased participation in debate despite getting little to no sleep, the Security Council delegates never ceased to amaze me. And now on to awards. The honorable mention award goes to a delegate who initially impressed me with their beautifully written position papers and well-crafted analytical resolutions. In committee, this delegate never failed to stay in position, post questions that immediately spurred substantive debate and draft and draft numerous successful super resolutions. I'm pleased to award the honorable mention award to the delegate of Niger. The best delegate award for the Security Council goes to a delegate who, right from the start of committee, demonstrated exceptional leadership qualities. This delegate immediately took charge was in, and was essential in the formation of blocks for each topic. With their exceptional work, work ethic, this delegate evidently motivated delegates to create resolutions that address every facet of debate, debate per topic, all while mirroring the passion and the statesmanship of a delegate of Vietnam.
will now pass it over to Jordan Velez, the chair of DICE. Hello, everybody. My name is Jordan Velez, and I had the great honor of serving as the 2020 DISEC chair. During this conference, I had the pleasure of chairing de delegates that were so dedicated to their topics that they could continue debate for hours upon hours on one, and we did. And I loved watching the delegates get more and more comfortable and involved. Eventually, we even had some people who would not talk at the beginning of debate sponsoring super resolutions, and I could not be more happy. So I'll begin with my honorable mention award. This person was always one of the first people with their placard up in order to ask pressing questions and was always ready to defend the nuances of their position. They also managed to persevere through the struggle of automatic lights. The honorable mention award goes to the delegate of Albania. For my best delegate award, I chose someone who I felt exemplified diplomacy through debate. They were elegant with their words, quick with well thought out answers, and they were an excellent leader with their blocks. She managed to reflect the attitude of a diplomat and I was impressed from the very beginning. The best delegate award goes to the Republic of Niger. Hello. Hello, delegates. My name is Vedihi Rathod, and it has been my honor to serve as the 2020 ECOFIN Committee Chair. Even though I had a small committee this year and mostly first-time delegates, I was pleasantly surprised by how diplomatic, coachable, and informed my delegates were, from the position papers and resolutions I received to perfecting Parley Pro to general debate and committee. Before I present the award for best delegate in my committee, I would just like to say that I genuinely wish I could award every single delegate in my committee because I saw every one of you grow from the first committee session to the last one. We went from two delegates participating to everyone in the com committee participating fairly evenly. Also, I really appreciated how coachable these delegates were. For example, if I asked the committee for a certain motion or if I asked them to practice their Parley Pro, they did it. There was no hesitation and I would like to thank all of my delegates for being super cooperative and collaborative. My best delegate award goes to the delegate in my community, commu committee that participated not only in the beginning, in the middle, or towards the end, but evenly throughout the entirety of the committee sessions. While they might not have been the delegate that spoke the most, each time they did speak, the ideas they contributed were very comprehensive. This delegate was an expert in parliamentary procedure from the start and they knew their country's position forwards and backwards, from the position papers and resolutions they wrote to the questions and super resolutions they presented in committee. This delegate knew when to take the lead and knew when to take a step back to allow other members of the committee to speak up. This delegate encompassed Chisman's core values of collaboration and diplomacy. The best delegate award in ECOFIN 2020 goes to the delegate of South Africa. Hi, uh, hi everyone, my name is Alex Fisher and I had the honor of serving as the 2020 Social, Humanitarian and Cultural Chair. To Stockholm's delegates, thank you for working diligently to provide resolutions to some of the world's most pressing human rights issues. While country positions varied, the one detail that remained constant was your attention to detail through questions and caucuses. I will first start with the honorable mention award. This delegate from the beginning was not one for sticking with the status quo. They constantly proposed new ways to shape debate, and it was clear that they knew their parliamentary procedure. Finally, they were also not afraid to show opposition, even if they might have been the only one doing so. This honorable mention award is given to Russia. Now for the award for best delegate. In short, this delegate killed it. Their placard was constantly up and they were not one to back down from their position. They led blocks, they were not afraid to give a point of order, and when answering questions, every response was incredibly eloquent. Additionally, they definitely proposed the craziest amendment I've ever seen. This best delegate award is given to Niger. Hello, 
Hello, delegates and advisors. My name is Lauren Thacker, and I've had the privilege of serving as the legal committee chair this year. Debate in committee this weekend was a truly great experience. Each and every delegate straight, stayed extremely engaged and really fostered a great debate environment. I'm so proud of you all, and I thank you for all of your hard work and initiative to speak up despite the small committee size. This year's honorable mention award winner was actively striving to engage in conversation with all delegates throughout committee. They consistently asked thoughtful questions, helped to organize groups and unmoderated caucuses and served as the liaison, helping to bridge gaps between opposing ideas and find compromises. This year's legal honorable mention award goes to the delegate of Italy. This year's Best Delegate Award winner truly shined this weekend. From their comprehensive speeches made at the beginning of committee sessions to their eloquent answers when asked difficult questions, this delegate showed a true talent for the art of debate. Their knowledge of the to topics at hand, their country's position, and the jurisdiction of the legal committee was incredible. They consistently led groups in writing super resolutions and came up with great solutions. This year's Legal Best Delegate Award goes to the delegate of Germany. Hello delegates, my name is Annabelle Hill and it has been an absolute honor to serve as the chair of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs this weekend. Our committee was made up of so many well-informed delegates who came ready to collaborate and debate. While all the UNUSA delegates are now an incredibly special part of my Schisman experience, there are a few delegates that I want to recognize individually. My honorable mention goes to a delegate whose enthusiasm continued to, to, continued to be a breath of fresh air throughout the weekend. This delegate's placard was probably up more than it was down and the ideas they brought to the debate elevated every conversation we had. This delegate is a true ambassador of all things outer space and of course of Thorium. My honorable mention goes to the delegate of Estonia. My best delegate award goes to a delegate who is the picture of diplomacy and committee. This delegate showcased their ability from the beginning writing some of the most well-developed position papers and resolutions I received. Furthermore, in debate, this delegate represented their country well, never straying from their at times difficult position. The delegate always spoke with an eloquence and grace that was, and was always willing to hear out the ideas of others and compromise on their own ideas. They were a clear leader in UNMODS and helped produce extremely comprehensive super resolutions. This delegate is what a Schisman delegate should be. My best delegate award goes to the delegate of South Africa. Hello delegates. My name is Juliana Cote and I had the immense pleasure of serving as this year's chair of the International Organization for Migration. While I am here to announce IOM's best delegate and honorable mention, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my amazing delegates who drafted effective solutions to some of today's biggest migratory problems. I was thoroughly impressed with all of you and I genuinely loved seeing each and every one of you come out of your shell. This honorable mention award is for a delegate who is constantly making motions and contributing to an active debate. This delegate was cooperative and creative in finding solutions to the many faceted aspects of the debate. They never fail to have their placard up for a motion or to have a unique answer to any question. For these reasons, the honorable mention goes to the delegate of Russia. Our best delegate award is going to a delegate who over the course of this weekend completely devoted themselves to diplomacy. They never fail to have their placard up for a motion or to have a unique answer to any question. This delegate was poised and incredibly well-researched. They encompassed what it means to eloquently and persuasively debate the position of your country. And for this reason, the IOM best delegate goes to Nigeria.
Ahoy delegates, my name is Emily Bruce and I have served as the 2020 International Maritime Organization Chair. I would like to quickly thank my delegates for making this the most difficult decision ever. Our committee was insanely cool and I'm so proud of y'all and I'm so happy I had the pleasure of being your chair. First, I would like to start off with my honorable mention. This delegate was a true leader in committee. From the mock debate, this delegate moved the committee along through their motions and questions. This delegate was never afraid to spark a debate and get the committee talking. I could also tell that this delegate had the most important part of debate down, having fun. This delegate was a joy to have in committee and I will be quoting them every time I think of the Shushman when they said, it's not peer pressure, it's just international encouragement. With that, the 2020 IMO honorable mention goes to the delegate from Japan. Next, I will present the best delegate. This delegate truly exemplified what it means to be a diplomat. From their papers, the delegate was unmatched in preparation, knowing the committee jurisdiction and relevant legislation like the back of their hand. Uh, and possibly, no, definitely better than myself. <laughs> this delegate was not always at the forefront of committee, but always carried themselves with diplomacy, creating debate through their questioning and sticking to position even when it meant not doing what was popular in committee. Through this, this delegate really showed what it means to be a diplomat, doing what's best for the committee and not only themselves. And with that, the 2020 IMO best delegate goes to the delegate from Estonia. Hello everyone, my name is Ray Moss and I have had the honor of serving as the UNAP chair this year. The entire UNAP committee was full of positive and def effective debate and everyone in the committee was dedicated to making sure the resolutions that passed were as good as they could be. Choosing the best delegates in committee was not an easy task. Therefore, first, I would like to give an honorable mention to the delegate who brought an important level of confidence to the committee early on, which helped encourage debate. Their comprehensive position papers and work in committee made the delegate from the United States amazing to work with. Next, I would like to present the best delegate award. Despite the large number of confident debaters, this delegate stood out in their knowledge of parliamentary procedure, their ability to present their topics succinctly, their debate skills, and their leadership skills during unmoderated caucuses. It is for this reason that I am glad to present the best delegate award to the delegate from Finland. Hello everyone, my name is Rushi Modi and I am your 2020 asterisk UNESCO chair. I would first like to congratulate all of my delegates. They have worked extremely hard this weekend and I'm proud of everything they've accomplished. The honorable mention award is being presented to a delegate who is respectful to all. Their papers were so beautifully written that when I first received them, I was excited to see what they would hold during debate. They did not disappoint. They were able to lead blocks, include everyone and stayed in position. I'm extremely pleased to award the honorable mention to the delegate of Indonesia. The award for best delegate is being presented to a delegate who consistently maintained diplomacy. Their passion for debate and the UNESCO topics were obvious. They spread their enthusiasm through debate and made debate extremely lively. They always knew what was going on during debate and knew how to keep it moving forward. I'm pleased to announce that the best delegate award is being given to the delegate of the Netherlands. Hello delegates, my name is Tanishka Kakuchi and I have the wonderful opportunity to serve as this year's UNRDC chair. I would like to thank my delegates for all of the hard work they put into everything this weekend. I really feel like everyone was respectful to one another and created sort of a community, even with being online, which I am so grateful for. I will begin my honorable mention 
A number of a number of delegates were in close contention for this award, and it pains me that I can't give it to all of them. But there was one delegate that stood out the most to me. I could really see them grow throughout committee, especially with parliamentary procedure and adding themselves to the speaker's list when no one else would. In addition, they interacted with other delegates and forming blocks and really provided depth to debate by asking questions and providing answers while thoroughly staying in position. This year's UNODC honorable mention is awarded to the delegate of Estonia. The best delegate award for UNODC 2020 goes to the delegate who stayed consistently active throughout committee and asking questions and making motions that really furthered debate. Not only did they have a strong understanding of Carly Pro, they were also very knowledgeable on all three topics. They raised their placard almost every single time for each speaker while also providing really well articulated answers to other delegates' questions during their own speaker's time. They had amazingly well-written position papers and resolutions that I could already foresee them being an outstanding delegate. They always had their camera placed in a proper position and also made an effort to form blocks with other delegates and crafted resolutions that were in jurisdiction of the UNODC. Additionally, they were respectful and maintained a great level of pro professionalism. With that being said, it is my utmost pleasure to present the best delegate to the UNODC delegate of Japan. Hello, delegates, fellow staff, and advisors. My name is Grace Puzzo, and I have the utmost honor of being the 2020 United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Chair. As this country's first chair, I was excited for engaging debate and passionate delegates, and I'm happy to say that my delegates did not disappoint. From highly substantive debate, diplomatic cooperation, and always positive attitudes, UNCTAD had a blast this weekend, and I would like to thank every single one of my delegates for trying out a completely new committee this year. However, among these amazing delegates, most of them brand new to Schisman, one shone the brightest this weekend. I could tell when this delegate came into committee that they would have a distinctive passion for diplomacy. With debate driving questions, diplomatic leadership and unmoderated caucuses, as well as thanking each delegate for their questions, they were definitely successful this weekend. UNCT, UNCTAD's 2020 best delegate is the delegate from Finland. Congratulations. Hello delegates, I am Cass Boyd and I have served as your 2020 with an asterisk World Health Organization Chair. Firstly, I'd like to thank the wonderful delegates of the WHO for an incredibly engaged and worthwhile debate. I was blown away by your combined ability to come together as a global community to solve such pressing and current issues and you each handled them throughout the debate with an admirable diligence and care. Again, Thank you all for an incredible conference experience and I wish you all the best. My first honorable mention in no particular order will go to a delegate who thoroughly impressed both myself and the co-chair. They constantly led their blocks and unmoderated caucuses to create wonderful super resolutions that they not only presented wonderfully but also defended effectively. This honorable mention award goes to the delegate of Japan. The next honorable mention delegate was a constant positive presence throughout debate. This delegate was not only incredibly well versed in their country's policy and perspective, but also able to defend that position soundly. This delegate was a great model throughout unmoderated caucuses and their speaker's time, and their willingness to present opposition kept the debate lively. For all of these reasons and more, I present this honorable mention award to the delegate of the Netherlands. The best delegate award has to go to the delegate who was constantly engaged in debate on every topic. I cannot think of a time when this delegate did not raise their placard and every single question that they asked deepened our discussion ever further. Additionally, the information they presented in their position papers reflected a very deep understanding of not only their own country's positions, but that of the international community's interests as a whole. It is for that reason that I am pleased to present the best delegate award to the WHO Delegate of Malaysia.
Hello? <laughs> Hello, Shizmin delegates. My name is Andre Miller, and it was a great pleasure to serve as your Model United Nations Introductory Committee or Munich Chair for Shizmin 2020. There is no greater joy for me than to witness the debate of those delegates who are the future of MUN, and these last two days have warmed my heart. I know that while Munich is supposed to be an introductory experience, my delegates carried it far beyond my wildest expectations. This made choosing awards very hard because I know that all of you have the capabilities to go on and become great delegates and even greater leaders in your future. To start my awards, this delegate was so active during committee that it was not surprising to see him ask two to three sets of questions in a row, always to dig into the nitty gritty aspects where others had not gone before. He was always on top of debate and strongly influenced where it was headed. And with that, I would like to present the Munich honorable mention to Malaysia. From the beginning of committee session, this delegate was a true leader for the committee, no matter if she was giving a comprehensive speech or using creative examples to ask very hard, thoughtful questions, she spearheaded super resolutions and moved the committee in new directions because of her debate. I am very happy to present the Munich Best Delegate Award to Tunisia. Thank you so much, committee chairs, and congratulations to all of the delegates who won awards this year. Um, let's give them all another round of applause. If you are a delegate who did receive a committee award, those awards will be sent to your school where you can pick them up individually. Now on to delegation, delegation award. Thank you so much for coming to Schisman 2020. We were so pleased to watch the unfolding of so many strong delegates and delegations this weekend. Typically, the delegation award criteria is heavily based on general assembly. With so many strong delegations and no GA, there were no front runners this year for delegation awards. Therefore, we have chosen to break tradition. The 2020 Schisman staff has completed the longest running staff term in the conference's history. While they could have, understandably, given up at any point, they didn't. They were dedicated and resilient. We are all so proud of them. This year, to honor their effort, a plaque will be added to the Schisman Trophy with the names of the entire staff of Schisman 2020 in place of the delegation award. Their dedication will be commemorated on the trophy forever. Thank you. Thank you all so much for making Shizman 2020. It's been a pleasure and although we might may not be together in person, I'd like to think that we're together in other ways. Your heart, passion for debate, exploration of committees and topics, and collaborative spirit have been inspiring to watch and make me wish that I could be a delegate just one more time. I speak for everyone on staff when I say that it's been a joy to get to know you in committee and we hope that many of you will return next year as delegates or for seniors like myself as co-chairs. For the time being, however, we want to celebrate you all and look back on a conference that's been incredibly different from the norm. Firstly, the online format. We know that the format of the conference this year has certainly changed and we hope you've enjoyed debating topics of international importance from the comfort of your own home or wherever you're zooming in from. We loved seeing your creativity in topics and working papers and despite being online, you produce some of the finest work that Shizven has ever seen. I'd also like to profusely thank the Digital Press Corps and their efforts. I'm sure you've all seen the wonderful diplomat and videos they have produced. The reporters and photographers have done a phenomenal job of bringing a journalistic element to our conference. So hats off to our DPC co-editors in chief, Corinne and Harley. Every year we have to come to the end of the conference and as such, it's time for Shizman 2020 to conclude. As I began Chisman with a Dog Hammarskjöld quote, I'd like to end with one that I think describes the weekend that we've had together. The longest journey is the journey inwards of him who has chosen his destiny, who has started upon his quest for the source of being. This year has been difficult and I'd like to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude to the Chisman staff. 
many of whom you've gotten to know over the weekend. They've been so positive and so resilient, and it's been an honor to work alongside them. From developing the topics that you debated, to writing the guides, to honing their parliamentary procedure and chairing skills, I hope that their tireless efforts have led to what has been a learning experience for you all. In a few short weeks, there will be a new Schisman staff, and as we think towards their journey, I hope that you'll return for Schisman 2021, which will be happening November 20th through the 22nd. I sincerely hope that you've taken inspiration from this weekend and that you return even brighter than next year. It is with deep appreciation for the 2020 staff and you, the delegates, that I fulfill my last ever duty as the Schisman 2020 Secretary General. The chair would now look favorably upon a motion to adjourn Schisman 2020. Um, I believe I see the Republic of Estonia. John Hergenhan, the Republic of Estonia. I move to um, finish Schisman 2020. That motion is in order, Delegate. Are there any seconds? Seeing seconds and taking no opposition, Schisman 2020 has been adjourned.